So in case you couldn't tell by my attire, it is proper cold out. It is like eight degrees outside and that's freedom units, not Celsius. So it's cold. And uh, I gotta work on the wife's van today, but before I can work on it, we gotta try to start the cold blood of this thing I have and I'm gonna plug it in and let it warm up for about half an hour and put the battery on charge and start the uh, the furnace just so I can warm up over there the wood stove but uh, it won't heat the barn up at all enough to do any good so we we are fully equipped with our thermal gear our insulated pants and I even have heated socks on so I guess you could say the barn has in floor heat now but yeah so I'll bring you guys back about a half hour when I got a cold start this beautiful tractor and uh, we'll get working on the wife's kid transporter Too hot but it'll be all right that heater won't heat the whole barn I mean it probably would over the course of a week but it uh, it's a good place to go over there and stand so you don't gotta get out of your winter gear and go inside to warm up and then lose all your motivation and not want to come back outside but it's a good place or it's in a good spot to heat this like tool room and that bay and the next bay um, this barn I don't think really ever had a direction to go when it was built for being heated and all that stuff but we can hang tarps across the end and stuff here and keep most of the heat in there if we ever work in there but we'll be doing a lot of work in there for the corn planter so that heater will come in handy but after a couple days it's going to go back to 30s and 40 degree weather and snow and we're only in this oil burda style weather for a couple days so but anyways what we're here to do is my van has an oil leak and i already took the cover off but it's got a 3.6 liter in it and uh if any of you know anything about 3.6 liter chrysler engines they are not a very good engine but if they ever leak oil like this one's doing all down the transmission and through the valley and over the woods to grandma's house we go the oil filter housing which is also an oil cooler is prone to cracking or warping and leaking because they're plastic well what we have here is an upgrade because when i fix stuff i like to upgrade it to stuff that you know is more failure proof than what was on it so this is a doorman aluminum housing to put in there it changes the oil filter this 2011 and it upgrades it to a 2014 filter so the oil cap for the filter indicates that on that little plate there um, I just changed the oil in this van about 300 miles ago it's always leaked oil it's just gotten worse it was never really bad before and uh, it's, it's noticeably gotten worse and I think it might be mixing a little bit of coolant with the oil now so it's time to fix it and to fix it we got to take this is the upper intake it's got to come off then there's a lower intake and that's got to come off and then we can get to that filter housing it's not going to be a fun project I'm not looking forward to doing this I'm not going to do a how-to video on how to do it I'm just bringing you guys along for the ride um, get you guys some content you guys can watch me struggle through this I changed the alternator on this van and let me tell you what I don't think I'll ever change another alternator on this van I'll take it somewhere and have it done um, if I would have made a video about it it would have been like a uh, one of them emergency alert deals you hear on the radio it would have been like that the whole video I threw tools I never throw tools I never get mad enough to throw tools I threw tools because I was so mad at that thing if the power steering pump ever goes out of this thing I have no idea how to change it 
it's back up under there. I think you got to drop the motor, or at least everything under the motor to get to it. It's, uh, yeah, no. So, I got to change this. Now, this Dorman kit I bought off of Amazon, 205 bucks. They're like 350 at AutoZone. Everywhere else they were 300 some dollars. Uh, you can get a plastic one, factory plastic one and put back on. They're like 200 bucks. Um, I found some cheap aluminum ones on Amazon for like 70 bucks. They had good reviews, but everybody recommended you put all the factory seals in them. You know, buy the Mopar seals and that jacks the price right back up to buying a plastic one. And I was like, eh, I'll just hunt around. I found me a dormant one. Now they got two different part numbers for these. Um, and I don't remember the other part number, but this is the part number that's supposed to fit the 2011 to 13s or something because they are a VVT engine and the other part number isn't designed for these because of the oil bypass in it or some garbage. Um, but this one is supposed to fit on here. So these fit 2011 to 2018s or something like that. But anyways, let's let's dive into this unfortunate project that I have to do. Okay, so I got the upper intake loose, so you have to take your air box, unhook it. You got to unhook this line that goes across. All the lines and the sensors that plug into the back of this. The air box piece has a little tab, and I know this is not. I'm not a not an auto mechanic YouTube channel, so you guys are gonna have to deal with the YouTube certified auto mechanic kind of video. So it's got this little tab that blocks that bolt, which are all eight millimeter. And uh, so you gotta pop it loose, push it back out of the way, separate it from, I believe that's the throttle body. Don't know, don't care. Um, take all the bolts out that are up here. There's two studs in the front. You gotta take the nuts off them. And there's two back here on this bracket. You gotta take them bolts off. Now they have them external torques, I think they're called. They're the torques, but you gotta have the socket for them. And I tried to take the one out back here, and as you can guess, it just snapped off because it's the littlest little thing there is. And uh, what the YouTube mechanics said was to just bend these brackets in the front out just enough to pop that off. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and if you guys want a good video to watch on how to do this, uh, Wes Works did a video on one of these. I watched a couple videos on how to do this. So let's get you guys set up for this very, very Wreck-It Ralph style extraction of the air intake. Get your snappy on pry bar here. Pry that little dude out of the way a little bit. That little push in the rearward position has been a little bit more, maybe. Maybe I don't have all the bolts out yet. I don't know. I only watched like two videos. They were like a half hour long. We started this project at about 4:15, so we're gonna see how long it goes. So those are bent out of the way. And well, would you look at that? It comes right off and I smell all kinds of gas. So there's your upper intake out of the way. Take this guy which has little snappy things on the back. Throw it out of the way. You got all kinds of room. Take that piece of foam, put it over yonder out of the way and then looky there you got a lower intake and your fuel rails and now would be a good time to probably change all the plugs and the um, pull packs but that's not the problem today so we have to your fuel rails right here you gotta undo that 
guy. And there's a way to discharge that. I think you're supposed to key on and floor it. it takes all the pressure off of it. And if not, you're supposed to put a rag over it. So let's key on and floor it. We just floored it in every position the key had except start. So these are a little push. It'll push in. Let's see here if I take a fuel bath. Wouldn't be the first time. Ugh. And here's a plier. Probably proper tools for this. Oh, just a little bath. I don't have the proper tools. Proper tools are the ones I have at hand. So, there you be. Get that guy shoved up out of the way. Get gas all over everything. And I don't, you gotta drain the coolant on this project. And that's, I believe, only when you take the oil cooler and everything off. And I don't even know how much coolant this unit has, but I know it's going to need completely drained and refilled because I believe it definitely got oil in it. So let me get that project started. Okay. So you got to take all the bolts loose there. Take your... Uh, electrical off for your coil packs for your injectors shove all that under the uh, brake booster there and then this guy if you got all the bolts loose they got four million miles worth thread on them your lower intake comes off now Dodge is really really proud of all their red connectors and I usually end up breaking them and deleting those but i only shot one across the shop so that's not too bad man there's a lot of a lot of carbon and gunk and the intake valves are clean though i can see right down to the valves um shows you how much emissions garbage is on your gas vehicle too so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stuff rags down in the intake there and clean that up a little bit because the next thing we got to get to is the actual problem and that oil valley or that valley is full of oil which figured the problem is so there's two sensors on your um, oil cooler here and they have to be reused if I remember right I don't think it's got a red thing on it, but we'll worry about that here in a second. Let me get that all plugged up and cleaned up and move on to the next part. Okay, so to get the hose off and that last sensor off, I got to pull this out. And I think it's just in five bolts and then a little pressure. pop it out and I did that more coolant started draining some of the like
so messy in there. You guys don't even... Well, you probably can see, but... Let's see. So, they use all these stupid Christmas tree type latches that you can't get to half the time. So I just cut them. <laughs> That hose will stay in place. You don't need to worry about no Christmas tree. Maybe I should have ran the van longer so it could have warmed up. Because that passage looks like it's full of antifreeze. I bet the thermostat didn't open up. Either way, it's off. There's not a lot of contamination yet. I'm not going to drain the oil and change it because I just changed it probably not even 300 miles ago oh come on I've been doing good guys I have not been cussing too much, even off camera. And I might have only said one thing so far that I'm gonna have to edit out for the camera. So we're doing good, we're doing good. I have cussed a few engineers. I uh, don't think you're human if you haven't on a project like this. So I don't know where our issue is on this thing and I rightfully don't care at this point in time. But all the gaskets did stay down in there. Here's what it looks like. I don't know, I'm throwing you guys around. You see all that? That is all oil. All oil. Shouldn't be there. I'm gonna get me, I got me some of them little pig mat diaper things. We're gonna stuff down in there. And I'll bring you back when I get this mess cleaned up. Okay, so. It's as clean as it's going to get. There's still a little bit of oil in there, but whatever. There's been oil in there for a while. So we're ready to uh, put it together. Get everything put back on and take her home. Okay, so it's the next day. After I went to AutoZone yesterday and got coolant, I come back to finish putting this together. And had a mishap with this oil temperature sensor. He did not want to come out of the old old piece, so naturally AutoZone was closed, and uh, I had to buy a new one. So we put that new guy in right there, and now we can go ahead and put this back together. So this comes with new bolts we'll use. Uh, I put the oil cooler on, there's seals in there, I put all the seals on the bottom, and I put all the seals in the lower intake yesterday since I couldn't do anything else till I got this piece. So now we can put this thing back together finally. Okay, we've got the oil cooler in and the lower intake. They all have torque specs for everything. They're all in newton meters or inch pounds. My favorite torque spec is as tight as you can get them with your hand choked up on a quarter inch ratchet. That's probably actually over tight, but it'll do. So with that stuff in, and now we have the joy of putting all the wires back where they go. And me remembering how many of these Christmas tree deals I broke. That I'm not going to fix. I think only a couple, but it's going together a lot faster than it come apart. And hopefully there's no leaks when we get done with it. Push them stupid red tabs back in there. I already hooked the fuel line up. Most of the Christmas trees on this particular set of wires I saved. 
it was stuff after this that didn't quite get saved so much. Not That one I shot the locking tab off of and it's somewhere under the car. But as long as they're on there, they shouldn't come back off. And you want to make sure everything's connected because you don't want to have to come back because you forgot to connect something up. Because it's a lot of work to get back down to here. And chances are I'll probably forget something. So I actually think that does it for all that stuff. Now we just gotta put the upper intake on. If I remember right. So this guy's gotta go in first just to be back in out of the way. kind of fault me so I turned the camera off because you guys didn't need to see that that foam piece did not make it back in there um, the brackets are bent back the way they need to be tightened up put coolant in it double checking everything before I give it the first start as long as there is no check engine lights it should be good and if there are check engine lights hopefully they're going to lead into this project Well, 
long as nothing happens after I let it warm up a little bit, this is the end of the video. So, catch you guys on the next one.